Reports have surfaced that Intel's newest manufacturing process, called Intel 18A, has poor yields. Let's talk about that. Before we begin, let me define process. The process is basically the recipe for fabricating a semiconductor. It's the chemicals needed, the processes, the equipment, and so forth to make a chip. And here's an explanation of yield. Semiconductors are fabricated as wafers, metallic dinner plate sized things. Inscribed in each wafer are copies of a rectangular die. Kind of, you can think of that as the chip itself. The bigger the die, the fewer that can fit on a wafer. And owing to manufacturing variations, there are defects in the wafer. Yield is the percentage of dice that don't have defects. For a given defect density, bigger dice will have lower yield because each one is more likely to encompass a defect. And because of yield's dependence on die size, engineers usually talk about defect density when analyzing a process, but yield in most contexts is easier to talk about, easier to grasp. And you can assume it applies to a die that's one centimeter on each side, unless otherwise specified. So returning to Intel 18A, while its yield may be lower than rival manufacturer TSMC's yield for its similar process, it's important to avoid assuming the worst. So let's talk about a few points uh, that kind of mitigate the situation or you should keep in mind. So yield should improve with production volumes. The kind of the, the rumors in the press are it's about 10% now. I would assume the goal is for eventually for the process to be greater than 80%, probably greater than 85%. Greater than 90% is not unreasonable, but 100% is, is infeasible. So thus, while it's undesirable to eat a bunch of bad dice, to, to have a lot of scrap, Intel could come out ahead in the long run if it starts limited production, starts figuring out what's going wrong, and just accepts the, the below target yields in the near term. And indeed, in Intel's most recent earnings call, the company said that it started production of its next generation laptop processor called Panther Lake. The fabrication process takes a few months and the company must produce a lot of chips to support a product launch. Thus, Panther is on track for some kind of release by the end of this year. Another point, Panther could be scaled back such that only a limited volume is available this year. That would allow Intel to claim a milestone victory while deferring volume production a couple quarters into 2026. Further, Panther uses only 18A for the compute die, so let me explain that. Instead of using a single monolithic die for all functions, as has been typical in chips, Intel has started to divide functions among multiple die in its PC processors. Input and output circuits are in one die, or tile to use Intel's terminology, graphics and multimedia are in another, and so on. The CPUs, the things that actually run software and are the heart of a processor, are in the compute tile. Intel is contracting with TSMC to make all of the tiles except for the compute tile, which Intel will fabricate itself using the 18A process. To an extent, 18A yield can be subpar, but the overall profitability of the product might be positive because the other tiles uh, are positive. Intel can sell them essentially for more than it's paying. It's not a great situation, but it's not negative either. Keep in mind, Intel replaces a laptop processor called Lunar Lake, which has a poor gross margin percentage because it has memory chips attached to it, which Intel has to buy and can't mark up by much when it sells them as part of Lunar. Without memory chips, Panther has a little extra leeway in being an improvement over Lunar, at least with respect to margin percentages. Another point, because it only addresses some types of laptops, Panther has limited applicability. 
due to come later, Intel's Nova Lake PC processor will cover most of the product stack, you know, desktops and laptops, and will have both TSMC and 18A compute die options. A lot of 18A capacity is a sunk cost at this point too. Amortizing the investment will make Panther's profitability look bad, but the cash has already left the company. The company is building less 18A capacity than originally planned, but it still has some, you know, enough to make the, the Panther compute die and the, the, some portion of the Nova compute dies. While 18A will be state of the art for three years, keep in mind Intel will continue to make what will then be older processors for a few more years. And even in several years, 18A will still be an advanced process and suitable for other products, especially if Intel is able to become a foundry, which is industry jargon for a contract manufacturer, which is the business TSMC is in. So Intel doesn't have a continuum of options between moving forward with 18A or quitting manufacturing altogether. That is, there's little middle ground. As expensive as commercializing the process is, we expect the company to plow ahead. For more information, see xpu.pub. If you found this video interesting, please tell four friends. Question or comments, put them below. Until next time, be well. It's all about the Pantheons, baby.